Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to go over a, a basic table of integration formulas, which you should memorize. And I think this, in, these, uh, this list includes what I consider the most basic and important integration formulas for a Calculus 1 class. So if you're in Calculus 1, you're going to want to know these. And of course, uh, that, that means for Cal 1, and 2, and 3, you're going to need to know these as well. So uh, below, we're going to let a, b, and n, and c be constants. u and v are functions of x. So if we have um, the antiderivative of u of x plus v of x dx, it's the antiderivative of the u plus the antiderivative of the v. That's the sum rule. The antiderivative of the sum is the sum of the antiderivatives. Constants can be brought out front if they're mul multiplied in here. So a constant factor here can be brought out front of the in integral sign or in and out at will. So the antiderivative of c times u of x is c times the antiderivative of u of x. And then we have the parts rule. The antiderivative of u times dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So this is a way of combining functions uh, in a certain way. Um, the power and exponential rules are kind of here. Uh, the antiderivative of a, of a zero is just a constant. The antiderivative of u to the n is uh, 1 over n plus 1 times u to the n plus 1 plus c. And the ant, uh, that works for any n as long as it's not negative 1. If n is negative 1, then you've got the antiderivative of 1 over u du. That's the natural log of u. Of course, you always have the plus c. Um, in a way, this works for constant functions, but let's let's go ahead and add one specifically specifically for constant functions. Not con yeah, constant functions. So if this is some constant, um, just say n. This is going to be n x plus c. Okay, and the antiderivative of e to the u du is e to the u plus c. The antiderivative of b to the u du is 1 over log of b times b to the u plus c. So, so far, all of this would definitely be uh, covered also in a survey of calculus class. But there's some formulas that we're going to get in Cal 1 that we usually don't get in survey of calculus, like hyperbolic trig functions. These are pretty easy for these two. The antiderivative of sinh of u is cosh of u, and the antiderivative of cosh of u is sinh of u. And then we have some basic trig functions here. The antiderivative of sine of u is minus cosine of u plus c. Antiderivative of cosine u is sine of u plus c. Antiderivative of secant square u is tangent of u plus c. Antiderivative of cosecant square u is minus cotangent of u plus c. Antiderivative of secant u tangent u is, uh, du is secant u plus c, and antiderivative of cosecant of u times cotangent of u du is minus cosecant of u plus c. You might notice one that's missing there is the antiderivative of secant u uh, du. That turns out to be natural logarithm of the absolute value of secant u plus tangent u and then plus c. And then there's some trig functions that look like this. A couple of these we've already done. Uh, well, the generalizations of some things that we've already done. So let A be a real number bigger than zero, constant. And did I say A is a constant? Yes, A is a constant there. Turns out that the integral or antiderivative of 1 over A squared plus U squared DU is 1 over A times the inverse tangent of U over A. You know what? That's totally fine like that, but I'd prefer to write that as arc tangent. I'd prefer to write this as arc sine and arc secant. Okay, although it was perfectly fine the way I just had it, so you can see it either way. The antiderivative 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared du is arc sine of u over a plus c. The antiderivative of 1 over the absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus a squared du is 1 over a times the arc secant of u over a plus c. 
And 1 over, the, over u squared minus a squared, when you take its antiderivative, you get 1 over 2a times the natural log of u minus a over u plus a plus c. Now these last four, actually the last five, this one here is secant, and these here, we have not proved yet. We proved all these others in earlier videos. So let's actually work out proofs of those last five, which turn out to be uh, pretty commonly used and are worth probably memorizing. So, of course, how do we prove any of these? We just have to take the derivative of our answer and, sh and show that it's the integram. So let's do that. Let's start with this one with the logarithm of the secant of u plus tangent of u absolute value plus c. Okay, so of course the plus c, the derivative of that's zero. That always happens. So that just goes away. So this is like log of w, log of the absolute value of w. So that's 1 over w times the derivative of the w. This time the w is secant u plus tangent of u. So we got 1 over secant u plus tangent u times the derivative of secant u plus tangent u. Now this is a sum rule, so that's the derivative of secant u, which is secant u tangent u plus the derivative of tangent u is secant square u. Both of these have a secant, so I can factor it out. By the way, when I multiply, that's going to be multiplied by the 1, so it's going to be in the numerator. we still got secant u plus tangent u in the denominator. I factor out a secant u here, and look what happens here. It just works out that you get exactly secant u, tangent u plus secant u, which is the same thing as the denominator. Addition is commutative. So these two factors, the top and the this little factor in the top with the entire denominator that cancels leaving you only secant u and that proves that antiderivative formula. Now in Cal 2 you may go over a way to get this sort of directly but once you found it this gives you a nice way to check it. And the same thing is true for these. This says forms from trig substitutions. There's a technique that you might learn in calculus 2 called trigonometric substitution. Um, that's a, a more complex solution. I consider that a more advanced technique and it could lead to some of these forms sort of directly. But actually we can prove that these are the, are the right forms by just taking the derivative of our answer like we did the last one. So let's work out the next one here. Here it is. Okay, the cost, well again, always, the derivative plus c is zero. So that goes away. Constant multiple rule sets that's 1 over a, and we have the derivative of the inverse tangent of u over a. The derivative of arctangent of u over a is 1 over u over a squared plus 1 times the derivative of the u over a. Now this 1 over a is still there, so they put the a down the denominator with it. Derivative of u over a is 1 over a, so now when I put these a's together, I've got an a squared at the denominator. U, u over a squared is u squared over a squared. And if I distribute this, it'll get rid of my little fraction inside of a fraction here by canceling a squares. Get a square here. Uh, actually, get u square here. And then I get a square times 1 is a square. So I get u square plus a square, which is the same thing as a square plus u square in the denominator and just 1 in the numerator. And so we proved that result. Let's prove this one. Again, we're choosing a positive number for a. Okay. Uh, but a is a constant. So we want to take the derivative of our answer, inverse sine of u over a plus c. The derivative of plus c is 0. So the inverse sine of, let's call this w, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus w squared times the derivative of that w. The derivative of w is 1 over a. <coughs> Excuse me. So we can think of this as uh, a is the square root of a squared. That's true if a is a positive number. And a square root, uh, uh, well, first of all, u over a squared is u squared over a squared. Now, the square root of something times the square root of something is this one square root and multiply it underneath, which is going to use the distributive property. a squared times 1 is a squared. That a squared cancels that a squared when you distribute. And so when the dust settles, you get 1 over the square root of a squared minus u squared, which is what you're supposed to get. Again, we're going to let a be a positive number. The derivative of 1 over a times the inverse secant of u over a plus c, the derivative plus c, of course, is always 0. And what do you get? Let's see, we get the 1 over a out front, so that gives us the 1 over the a here. And the derivative of arc secant of, say, w is 
the absolute value of the w, w is u over a, times the square root of the w squared minus 1 times the derivative of the w. That derivative there is 1 over a, that a and a, that a makes, uh, let's see, the square, well that a, we're going to make the square root of a squared. Alright, so let's see what we can, can get out of this. Uh, now a is a positive number, so this absolute value of a in the denominator is an a which cancels that. The square root of a squared we're going to distribute here and make the square root of the a squared is canceled to u squared minus 1 times a squared is a squared and it leaves an absolute value of u there which is exactly what we started with. One more. Okay again a is positive if we need that. Okay du d over du of 1 over 2a times the natural logarithm of u minus a over u plus a plus c. Well, the derivative of the plus c is 0. The 1 over 2a is a constant multiple rule, so I'll pull that out front. The derivative of log of something is the reciprocal of that something, which is what I have here. Notice this switch, the reciprocal, 1 over this, so it's u plus a over u minus a, times the derivative of that something. So this is log of w, you get 1 over 2a, 1 over w, which is this, and this is the derivative of the w. Now the derivative of this w needs to use the uh, quotient rule. So first of all, put this together, we get 1 times u plus a in the numerator, we got 2a times u minus a in the denominator. Over here we got the quotient rule from here. So it's the bottom times derivative of the top minus the top times derivative of the bottom over the bottom square. The derivative of u minus a is 1, the derivative of u plus a is also 1. So this is u plus a, distribute the minus here, minus u plus a, the u's cancel and you get 2a. That 2a cancels the 2a here, one of those u plus a's cancels the other u plus a, and you get 1 over u plus a times u minus a, which can be written rewritten as a difference of squares, 1 over u squared minus a squared, and that proves that property. So, either in this video or an earlier video, we have proved all of the properties on this list. And so I would think of this as my basic table of integration formulas for Calculus 1. And if you memorize all of these, most likely you'll be able to do most of the problems that I would assign in my class uh, with, with these formulas here and a little bit of substitution, maybe a little algebraic manipulation perhaps the properties of a logarithm or an exponent or possibly of a trig function, maybe a trig identity. But uh, with, with those little bit of uh, things, you could be able to do just about any problem that I'm going to assign in Cal 1 at least with these. But of course, there are actually uh, infinitely, many, infinitely many really antiderivative formulas, just like there are infinitely many derivative formulas. Every time you work a derivative problem, there's a corresponding antiderivative formula that you could find. These are just sort of the most basic ones and the ones that you can build up other things from. So once again, it's going to be very important that you memorize the stuff that's on this page. I would suggest making some flashcards out and running through those flashcards over and over and over and over again until you're absolutely sure that you have these absolutely completely memorized. And of course, do lots and lots and lots and lots of problems so that you get more and more comfortable working with this. And be sure, of course, that you can do all of this in conjunction with U substitutions.